So we're going to be performing a Barden, Barlow and Ortolani test, trying to ascertain whether there is any joint laxity at the coxofemoral joint. So these tests are subjective assessment for hip laxity. If you want to do an objective assessment where you put numbers to it, then we do have to do the pen hip radiology. So palpating for joint laxity is part of our standard workup for hind limb lameness in dogs. It is a test that is usually only detectable in young animals. When I say young, maybe up to 18 months, two years, um, before fibrosis sets in. So this dog is in lateral recumbency at the moment, so I'm going to demonstrate the Barden manoeuvre. And to do that, I'm going to be putting my hand under the femur, palm underneath the stifle. He's a big dog, so my hands will struggle a little bit. But what I'm going to be trying to do is use these fingers to lift the femoral head out of the joint. And then I'm going to be using this hand to try and detect a certain amount of laxity. Now we do get a little bit of laxity in a normal dog, something maybe like that. I don't know whether it demonstrates very well on the video, two or three millimetres. What we don't want is this full-on trampolining effect. So let's just do that on him at the moment. Is it him? Yes. Okay, so hand underneath the stifle, my finger's right up into his groin, my thumb is grasping the stifle and the tips of my finger are really trying to lift the the femoral head out of the socket and these fingers here are cupping the greater trochanter doing that over the greater trochanter he's obviously a well-loved dog so he's got plenty of coverage here so i'm putting a fair bit of force lifting that femoral head out and then these fingers that are cupped over the greater trochanter are just trying to palpate how much trampolining effect we're getting at that um, coxofemoral joint and I'm only getting two or three millimetres which I would deem as normal. So that's the Barden test. I will be performing an Ortolani test um, as well. I'm only little, I need small hands. I actually find it easier to perform the Ortolani test with dogs on their back. So that's what I'll be demonstrating for you today. So, All right, so we've moved him into um, dorsal recumbency and I've got this skeletal example uh, sitting over top of them here. The Ortolani test is where we're pushing down and trying to um, subluxate this femoral head. While we're pushing down with the femurs perpendicular to the table, we're rotate, pushing down, pushing down, we're rotating that femur out and we're looking for that clunking in motion, which is not present in a normal dog. We'll only get that if the hip was subluxated in the first place and it will be an obvious uh, visible um, clunk and palpable clunk. This dog has got normal hips, so you won't see it. We'll demonstrate the movement, and then we've got a little puppy coming up soon that we may be able to demonstrate a positive Ortolani test there. So subluxate, abducting the hip with the femurs perpendicular to the table. So let's demonstrate that on him. So stifles together, I'm cupping the stifles and I'm looking over the sides just to make sure that the femurs are perpendicular to the table and I'm just putting a weight bearing degree of pressure onto his stifles and you want to abduct keeping the femurs perpendicular to the table. What I do see sometimes is that the femurs are going forward in which case we are not performing correctly. So keep the femurs perpendicular to the table Weight bearing pressure, I do both together. This is just, there are variations as I mentioned before, aiming to subluxate those hips if there is laxity. Slowly abducting those femurs, looking or palpating a clunk. I know this guy hasn't got one because we've been here and done this before with him, and we've got nothing. If we did get a positive Ortolani, we would come back and just repeat that. Now, dogs that are, have mild laxity will usually get a positive clunk fairly early on your abducting process. Dogs with obvious uh, laxity where they have major subluxation, you may end up having to be quite a, uh, a long way abducted before you get return 
of the femoral head into the coxofemoral joint. Remembering over time, this laxity causes irritation, you get secondary fibrosis, and we will start to lose that palpable laxity in older dogs. This next section of video is just demonstrating the performance of Ortolani with the dog in lateral. Here I am pushing up on the stifle, when I say up, in that direction I just pointed, as if about a weight-bearing degree of pressure. My thumb, which I'm moving there at the moment, is just positioned gently over top of the greater trochanter. It's just a feel for a clunk. Now I'm using my left hand to keep pushing up towards the wall. As I abduct, my thumb is also palpating for any clunk that might be detectable if there is laxity, which there was not in this dog. This next case demonstrates a positive ortolani performed in lateral recumbency. If you watch the thumb over the greater trochanter, you'll see it pop. A bit hairy, this little dog, so a bit hard to see. There it goes. And again. <laughs> 